Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Lights and Perfection. You are here for another moment in the Word, and my name is Chris. On this channel, what we try to do is bring to you the truth about biblical perfection and holiness to light through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we do that very simply by breaking into God's Word and pulling out of it spiritual biblical principles that we might be able to apply to our daily lives to deepen, enrich, and enliven our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to cause us to become doers of his word and not just hearers only. Let's go ahead and dive in. Well, hello once again. My name is Chris, and you are here for this segment of Moment in the Word. Today on this segment, what we want to talk about is God's word and how his word will accomplish what he has set out for it to do. And we're going to be reading directly from Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Today's segment of Moment in the Word, brothers and sisters, is very, very simple. God's Word will always accomplish exactly what He set for it to accomplish. Now, why is that important? Well, I'll give you one instance. For me personally, I've been in a season of waiting like never before. I've had to endure a long season of what seems to be nothing um, nothing really manifesting. It seems like all these doors are closing. It seems like I'm being boxed in and nothing's really able to move. And so the temptation in the flesh to say, okay, you know, God, I really believe that you led me to this point, but now, you know, you're not showing up on time, so... I've got to I've got to do something, um, and this is uh, this is a lot of times what a lot of people get into as believers. We're going to be tested in this, and the the real test is, you know, how are we going to be consistent in our faith? Are we going to continue trusting God that He alone has a plan and that His word will accomplish what He set forth to do? And how do we apply that in our lives? What does it look like? You know, as I shared, for me, I've been in this really long, long season of just being boxed in and isolated, and it seems like all sorts of things are ending in my life, but there's not a whole lot of things that are starting in my life. And so I'm in this weird pivoting moment that has lasted for a very long time, and the temptation for me to find things to fill my time with or to put my trust in other things is an ever-present temptation. And so the point is, is that when I read this scripture, and when you read this scripture, we can understand that from the beginning of creation, God has created things to happen and to, to, to work out in a certain way. As the scriptures read, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth. There's a purpose in the rain and the snow coming down from heaven. God is saying that his word is just like that, that when he sends it out, it's not going to return to him void. In other words, when he sends rain on the earth, it doesn't just bounce off the earth and just come back to him without doing something. And so this is really important, and it really reminds me, too, of crops and, and planting and growing and harvesting and, and how everything has its season and how you know, when the rain hits the ground, not immediately do we see the sprout. But we have to realize that everything has its time and season. And so there may be a season of, of watering. There may be a season of growing. Regardless of what season it is, it's important that we have confidence in God. And through these gentle reminders that we have in his word, I find that it's easier to endure when you can First of all, read his word, but then have a connection to his word because you've allowed God to work other things in your life through what he has said in his written word. And what does that look like? Well, you know, you can reflect back on um, how God dealt with ancient Israel, how he 
called them to commemorate certain aspects of their life in him and what he had done, the miracles he wrought, the provisions he provided. You know, Abraham trying to, um, at the moment when he was going to go sacrifice Isaac, his only son, and he made a statement. He said, you know, God will provide for himself the, the, the sacrifice. And so it's really a beautiful thing is that these people, they knew who God was, they knew his character, and they knew they could rely on that. And so God's word being spoken to them about who God is, they were able to hold on to that. Now, we have had similar situations in our lives if we can really think back and look back upon all that God has done in our life through his word. Then when we come to a present difficulty, we can draw from the faith and the strength that God gave us in times past and renew it in the present through his word to trust yet another day. And so it's so important and vital that we don't get off track and follow the desires of our own flesh. And what I mean by that is that we don't take the ball out of God's hands and try to dribble it down the court on our own. We need to know what direction to go in, and we can't go it alone. And so it's very vital that we recall that just as God, just as God causes rain and snow to water the earth and how it makes you know, growth upon the earth, it waters gardens, it waters crops, and these things grow. They bring forth sprout and bud, and, and they provide a harvest for those that are harvesting it, give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Just like that, God sows his word into our lives. He gives us hope and encouragement, but sometimes we have to, through faith, endure times of testing and trial and tribulation with that word in our heart, and we need to allow God to perform that word in our life without deviating from our faith in him. And so if God has given you a revelation, if God has spoken something to you, and you know 100% that it's God, because if it's not God, it's not going to come to pass. And so we need to be able to, first of all, submit to God's will, submit our will to God's will, and understand what his word says about any given situation. You and I, brothers and sisters, can take that word to the bank every time. You know, you look at situations like the persistent widow, you know, who kept hammering the door of an unrighteous judge, wanting judgment against her adversaries. And, you know, this judge kept ignoring her and ignoring her and ignoring her. But because she was persistent, because of her impudence, because of her audacity to keep hammering down this door, this judge said, you know, I'm going to give her what she wants. And, you know, sometimes what we need to do and all we can do, actually, is hold on to that word and keep bringing it back before the throne. We may think that this is a futile exercise, but I assure you, brothers and sisters, that it is not. If God indeed spoke a word to you and he spoke it through his word, he confirmed it through many signs and wonders. He has made it sure that this is his word for you, that he sent it forth into your life. Whether it takes a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it will be accomplished in his time. I was speaking on the phone with somebody last night, and we were discussing Joseph before he was made second in command under Pharaoh and all the difficulties he had to endure. The word of God was testing him because, you see, Joseph had a dream as a young man, and he had to hold on to that dream through being sold into slavery, thrown into a pit, put into prison, you know, just totally mishandled in every way, shape, or form. But he held on to that word. We don't know what that looked like because we don't have that in the scriptures. But we do know the outcome of that dream. It came to pass, but it took 17 to 20 years. I don't remember the exact date off the top of my head, so forgive me for that. But it took over 17 years to get to that point in his life where God's word was fully formed. Now, God sent that word out all those years prior. But it had no appearance that it was actually going to come to pass. And so, brothers and sisters, let that be a reminder through God's word that when God speaks a word, when we read through his word and we can read his promises, and even though our situation doesn't look like a promise of God is being fulfilled, we can hold on to that very promise in faith. And sometimes, like I mentioned before, we may not have the direct inspiration to continue believing. 
I think God leaves us to ourselves. He doesn't leave us or abandon us or forsake us. He's actually always there. But sometimes it seems like he is off in a distant place. And it's a beautiful thing because God is testing us to see how we're going to handle under the pressures of trial and tribulation. Are we going to remain steadfast, trusting in the Lord, or are we going to turn aside to our own plans and formulas to try to handle it or go it alone? Brothers and sisters, this was just a really quick moment in the word to just drop some principles of God on you, some spiritual truth, some nuggets of truth to just give you something to kind of give you that hope to tide you over for whatever it is you're waiting for God to perform in your life. And we have to be careful when God is speaking to us. Don't get me wrong. But we need to discern that it is coming from God. And then once we've discerned that it has come from God, then we can hold on to it for dear life until that word is formed. And it takes, it takes courage. It takes discipline. It takes diligence and vigilance to, to protect that word that God gave us so that the enemy doesn't come in and sow doubt, so that our friends and family don't come in and sow doubt into our life. We need people to surround ourselves with people that know how to encourage us in God's word. And when I say to encourage us in God's word, that doesn't always mean that they tell you what you want to hear. Encouragement from God is rarely defined by stuff you want to hear. It's stuff that you need to hear. And so I'm encouraged when I hear stuff that I need to hear that's biblical, that's authoritative, that's truth coming from God, revealed through the Holy Spirit, spoken by his, his, his people. I love that. That's encouragement. That's exhortation. That's discipline. That's correction. And we need that in our lives so that what we're hearing is truly from God. But when we have confirmed over and over again that it is God speaking, brothers and sisters, hold on to that word. It will not return to God void. It will accomplish everything he set forth for it to accomplish. Take courage today in God's word and heed what I'm sharing with you, that God is for us. He is not against us. And he, there may be times where we feel like God is against us. But rest assured, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus and have his spirit within you, he is for you no matter how you feel. So brothers and sisters, we do thank you for tuning in to this segment of Moment in the Word. We do hope and pray that it has blessed you in some significant way. And before we go, we always want to say the Aaronic or High Priestly Prayer, not as a high priest, but because it's a beautiful blessing that we can place upon you, God's people. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you, lift his countenance upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you.